In this video, what we're going to do is take a look at the melt deformer. We will start with the basics before diving in and making a simple project. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is going to be the end result of what we're going to create after we've talked about the basics of working with the melt deformer. So let's go ahead and switch to a slightly different scene now where I do have a cube to represent our ice cube. And I do want to point out that it has been scaled down a little bit. It's 100 centimeters or so. And I did make sure it's sitting pretty darn close uh, to uh, the top of our table here. That's going to be important as well. Scale plays a big part with the melt deformer, so keep the, the size of your objects in mind. And so now what I'm gonna do is create the melt deformer and make it a child of the cube. Now, don't freak out when you see it disappear. The first thing I'm gonna do is go into the coordinates tab of my melt deformer. I don't have a fit to parent uh, button here, unfortunately, although it, it doesn't really need to be sized to the parent. It just needs to be positioned closer to our object and really more on the Y axis than anything else. But um, the others also play a role. Uh, and you'll also notice that by zero, zeroing it out, uh, it went to the middle of my cube, which is not going to work. So I'm gonna take this melt and put it at the same level as our tabletop. We're pretty close to it, okay? Now, if I switch to the object tab, you'll see we already have some strength applied. So if I take that down to zero, um, we'll see our cube again. And you may be looking at this going, well, this doesn't look like much. And that's because just like our other deformers, we need to make sure we have enough segments or edges on our geometry in order for it to deform correctly. So I can take the segments on the X up to 20. Same with Y. Why don't we do our Z, why don't we do all three just to be on the safe side here? And now when I melt, this is what we get. Now there's a couple of things to keep in mind with this though, because this looks okay. And there's definitely some things we can do to make it look a bit better. One is to adjust the radius. Notice how adjusting this radius gives us a really different look. So from you know really flat to kind of pointed, and if we go even super small, something really, really noisy there. Uh, now, I also wanna point out, and we see this with some of our other properties as well, like the noise scale, that we do wanna be careful and look out for overlapping um, geometry. Now, one of the ways we could fix this is by reducing the number of segments on the Y axis. You can see that's doing you know, a pretty good job of getting rid of it, um, but we have to go all the way down to zero in order to do that, and that may not be um, exactly what we want to do. I also think it's a good idea when working with the melt to throw your geometry into a subdivision surface, and that's just going to soften those edges up a little bit more. So you can see now we're getting some really interesting shapes as we use this melt, and I like to use the melt honestly for other things other than melting just because you get interesting uh, shapes to your geometry, really not all that different than using a displacer or, or something like that. Uh, but in this case, it's primarily being applied to the top, which can be a little bit tricky to do. Um, so this radius, like I was saying, does have a pretty big impact here, along with the vertical randomness, right? So if you use a very low radius here, get some of that randomness, um, from the radius, you can then limit it even more with the vertical randomness uh, property here. And we can see just how, you know, random you can get. Same thing here with radial randomness. Um, now, honestly, when I'm using the melt, I don't typically use objects like a cube because even when I turn this value up really high, I get something very square. Uh, and maybe that's what you want, in which case you are, you know, good to go. But Oftentimes I do want this to be a little bit more round, a little bit more natural. And so I'll start with a sphere regardless of what object is melting. And in fact, that's what I did in this scene here where um, what I actually melted wasn't a cube, it was a sphere. Maybe you picked up on that earlier, but that gives us a nice kind of rounded um, shape. So aside from our randomness, we also have the melted size, which allows you to make it smaller or larger. Can be very helpful because we do get an up a, an area here that's quite a bit larger, roughly 400% or so. Maybe that's too big, maybe that's too small. You can definitely control this here. The other thing that's important, especially for kind of breaking up our geometry a little bit more, uh, is our noise scale, okay? So if you want larger noise, you can turn this higher. 
If you want less noise or a smaller noise pattern, you can turn it lower. And notice just how quickly from 2% we lose pretty much all detail, um, where you know the default, I think it's 10%, looks pretty good. And you can even get you know some other looks to this as well by using higher values depending on the scale of your geometry. And that's why I mentioned the scale earlier between the noise scale, melted size, or radius, um, you know, the size of your geometry does matter. And ultimately, you also want to be careful of geometry intersecting itself when you use the strength, because that's something that can happen quite a bit. And while it may not look like a big deal here, depending on the type of your uh, material you apply, especially if it's a transparent material, um, that could be problematic. Although you do always want to, you know, confirm what you're seeing because it may look like it's intersecting with your camera view. But if you really were to zoom in, you know, it turns out maybe it's just really, really close to intersecting. And so it can actually work just fine. Okay. So those are kind of the basics of the melt deformer. Uh, now in terms of making the scene we have here, Okay, just created a cube for the table and I have some materials and I'm not gonna go too much into the materials, but the liquid water material um, I did grab from the asset browser. This liquid ice, there is a liquid ice material in the asset browser, but I kind of made my own. Um, so I deleted everything in here and just kind of mixed a couple of noises together uh, with a color mix and used it in the bump map to give us uh, something that looks a little bit like ice. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use this to create the actual kind of melted cube, since like I said, that's um, what I like to do, and then use maybe a round shape. So we're gonna find something maybe like that. Let's make, play with the radius a little bit. You can see just how, you know, with a higher radius, it's almost like it hasn't melted at all versus a lower radius where it looks almost melted entirely already. And there's very little wiggle room there. So find something you like. Melted size, you could perhaps adjust. Um, though we're, we could also just adjust the size of our cube at this point. And then the noise scale as well as something you can turn up. So I think this in conjunction with our materials is what gives us our look. I should also point out though, that we can work with fields here and that can make this pretty interesting um, as well. So if I was to use, say, a linear field, you can almost melt now in a straight line. If I get out of my camera, because it's locked, all right, you can see, let's see how we're able to apply this from unmelted to whatever we've set up in our melt. And the size here maybe should be something like this. Increase the strength of the melt, and we'll see that. Right, so I was talking earlier about using this to create, you know, geometry. This is definitely an interesting way to be able to deform geometry and then turn it back into whatever the default um, or beginning shape is. And so you can do a linear field. You could also, you know, do something like a spherical field or cylindrical or cylinder field as well to get something. Now I'm gonna switch to a top view here so I can make sure this is sized right at least there, and then maybe come here to a side view and adjust it as well. You can see how it's working on the top and bottom of our cube. I think we need to, height looks pretty good, maybe just adjust, yeah, that looks pretty good. So you can kind of see that effect now where it's just melting in uh, the middle. Certainly as we scale this out, we'll see it applied. And once again, just interesting changes to our geometry. And you never know when you're gonna want something like this. And while there could be other ways of doing this, once again, using say a displacer um, or something like that, it's nice to have different methods because you never know exactly what's gonna give you the best results. So fields also can be used on the melt. All right, now back to kind of this um, final project, if you will. So let's start once again, back with getting our cube, you can see low strength, maybe want the radius a little bit higher, but I don't like how really is just not taking much here. So it's gotta be something I changed. So why don't we, I wonder if that's what it was. Yep, the melt got moved up somehow. So I'll move it back down. Probably was when I was adjusting the fields. 
And I think that will give me a little bit more play um, with some of these other properties. So say the strength, the radius, right? Noise scale, there we go. And then let's just kind of turn this down a little bit. See what we get. So that looks pretty good for say our half melted ice cube. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is create a sphere and we're going to make that a child of the cube geometry just so we can use it to center. And you can see it's getting the melt applied to it as well. Radius 100, maybe should be a little bit smaller like 50 since this is what will melt. Um, but I will pull this out and yeah, we'll just create our, well, play, apply that melt to it as well. We can turn off the cube or hide it so we can see what we're working with here. Double check that our sphere is sitting on the table and it just about is. So let's pull this down just a touch. There we go. The melt, same thing, kind of at the level is the of the table. Now when we're deforming spheres, you rarely want to use the standard type. Um, I would recommend using the hexahedron um, type as we'll end up with four sided polygons instead. So now we have our melt and I may just kind of right click on these properties just to get them to kind of go back to their um, original values. And now we can just kind of melt this out and see what we like. I probably would add a few more segments to this. You know, worst, worst case is I put it in a subdivision surface generator if I need to smooth that out as well. But that is looking pretty good. Um, what I want to do now is double check if this is laying flat on our table. And you can see it's pretty close. It's not perfect, right? A little bit of a gap there. So maybe a few minor issues. You can also see how in that side view, it's, you know, up a little bit higher. And that, you know, is going to give us a little bit of the surface tension we might expect uh, with water. So with that, we can turn the cube on. And you can see we have that now looking pretty good. I may actually want the melt size maybe a little bit larger. And I wonder if we could just turn this down a little bit. So I'd like to get a little bit more detail in this. And that might be a noise scale thing, right? So maybe something like that. Um, radius could help. But I'm trying to avoid those that intersecting geometry. Um, and we also wanna keep an eye on just how close we are to being kind of level on the ground here. And in this case, since I do see almost a uniform space, I may pull this down just a little bit more. But depending on your settings, you know, could be different. Uh, at this point, because of how far I'm pushing this, I do think I'll put this in a subdivision surface deformer. Um, not deformer, a generator. And if that means I want to lower the points a little bit, I, I can, but I do want to be careful here. I wonder if that, that looks like it is pushing through. So may want to make some adjustments. So that isn't quite the case. That's looking pretty good right now. Like I said, with these materials, liquid water came from, um, the asset browser, uh, liquid ice is one I made myself with just a couple of noises plugged into the roughness. So we'll apply that to the cube. And of course the table is just a cube. Uh, and I grabbed this material as well. The lighting in here, I should mention is just a dome light. And, um, I pulled this HDRI from the asset browser and you can see this is what we're getting. Not too bad. I think we're getting a little bit of kind of clipping or, or where it's going through the, the table there. Um, so maybe come back into our melt and, you know, adjust the noise scale a little bit. And we can see how that kind of improved this quite a bit. No longer get that kind of weird shading issue. Um, last thing is the depth of field on our camera, which I've already set up. The only thing I really changed in the camera is the focal length here. I set it to 50 millimeters just to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, and to turn on or work with depth of field, I will turn on bokeh. Uh, now I'll use the focus distance or the focus picker to choose what I want in focus. And the aperture does default to eight. And this is another property that depends on the say, uh, scale or size of your scene. I'm going to turn this down until I get the amount of depth of field I want. And I realize I'm not using very realistic values here. Um, but if that's what it takes to give me the amount of blur I want, then I'm perfectly okay with that. All right. And now looking at this, I do think we're getting a little bit of kind of 
clipping right here where the um, melted water or liquid is going through the table. And so why don't we try to just move that a little bit up? You can just, you can see it fixing. I'm going like that, perfect. That looks pretty good. Um, now, honestly, as long as we don't get a, a little bit of a gap here to let us know we're floating, you know, I think this will just about do it. So that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could like it and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, take care.